next on 7 News at 6. Mill workers who watch their jobs go up in smoke find financial and spiritual relief. We're live with the very latest. Emotion fills the courtroom. A man is charged with killing his girlfriend's baby. And earthquake dangers right here in the Bay State. 7 News at 6 is right now. Broadcasting live from Channel 7. New England's news station. Kim Kerrigan and John Marler bring you 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone. It's great to have you along. I'm Kim Kerrigan. And I'm John Marler. There is some relief tonight for employees of a Methuen mill destroyed by a fire. The workers received paychecks today. Their jobs burned to the ground Monday. Today, Cardinal Law offered to help them. Let's go to 7 News reporter Victoria Block, who is live in Methuen. Vicki? St. Monica's school was the place to be just a short time ago. That's where Cardinal Law was, meeting with about 25 community leaders and lots of workers, and he really played to a packed house. He brought them hope, and he brought them spiritual comfort in their time of need. Cardinal Law is spearheading a community movement to bring Methuen and Malden Mills back to life. It's been an emotional day for mill workers who packed the Knights of Columbus Hall to pick up their paychecks. Uh, hopefully the holiday be okay. They stay together with the family. They don't know how soon they'll be going back to work. And area residents don't know just when they'll be allowed to return home. Under police escort, they were able to grab a few basics today before heading back to temporary shelter. They've been told the air was unsafe. In the near future, we probably end up with problems. You know, our lawns or something, cancer, or who knows. But after touring the site today, EPA officials cleared the air and reported they didn't find any dangerous chemicals in preliminary test results. We haven't detected anything of concern. Uh, the air quality, aside from just smoke, appears to be uh, excellent. The investigation itself is going well, too. Officials say there was an explosion, but they don't think it was in the boiler room as first suspected. The floor of origin is floor two of the original fire building, and in that room, in that area, is, was a basic processing operation. Firefighters in Methuen are exhausted, and with flare-ups like these, it could be days before they're rested and warm. So how long will you have somebody stationed here? Around the clock until the last number is out, now until there's no more smoke, and that may be for over a week. FEMA has set up an information center for people who need info on resources and as well as the victims. And it's at 462 Broadway, the Knights of Columbus Hall. It's where people were picking up some of their checks today. It will be open tomorrow from 9 to 6 and on Friday from 9 to 6. Also, the mill's owner was here today, and he said that between Christmas and New Year's, he's hoping to start bringing back some of the workers. And he says within months, he's hoping that he can employ at least two-thirds of the workforce. Reporting live from Methuen, I'm Victoria Block, 7 News. Vicki, we thank you for your report, and we have an update now on the conditions of the 13 people still hospitalized from that mill fire. Those injuries include second and third degree burns and smoke inhalation. The injured were taken to hospitals throughout the state. Now tonight, eight people remain in critical condition. One is in serious condition, and another is in fair condition. And three people are stable, but in guarded condition tonight. Be sure to keep it right here on 7 News for the very latest on the Methuen Mill fire. We'll bring you the latest developments as soon as they happen. An ice rescue on Cape Cod. Doctors tonight try to save the life of a child. The nine-year-old fell through thin ice on Flax Pond in Dennis late this afternoon. The child was flown to Boston City Hospital. Police say the boy may have been underwater for as long as 20 minutes before divers found him. The child was in cardiac arrest when he was pulled from the pond. We're on a storm watch tonight. Snow is expected to fall in our area tomorrow, and it could make the afternoon commute a little difficult. So let's check in with 7 News Chief Meteorologist Harvey Leonard. He's tracking this storm. Harp? The cold air has been entrenched for days. It still is, but now the warm air to the south is starting to ride up and over the cold air. That is causing the snow to break out across Ohio into westernmost Pennsylvania, New York. The timetable should be about after the morning commute. I think we'll sneak by that. Then the first flake should start to fly, and then tomorrow, midday and afternoon, steady snow. So you could be facing one to three inches of snow on the ground for the evening commute with steady snow falling at that time. And that's far from the end of the story. Very complex weather pattern evolving for the next couple of days. And that full story is coming up in just about 15 minutes. Our Raina man is held without bail tonight. He's accused of murdering his girlfriend's 14-month-old son. 
the child's father wants some answers about how his child died. 7 News reporter Katerina Bandini has the story. As the judge orders 22-year-old Eric Peters held without bail for the murder of 14-month-old Justin Bento, applause erupts from the back of the courtroom. The baby's father tearfully clutches to his son's photograph. After the arraignment, the emotions continue. How could anybody do this? He's not a person, he's an animal. Look at him. Could you, what could you do to him? What could you do? Nothing. I don't care if he cries or not. He's a little boy. That's what boys do. Prosecutors allege Peters beat baby Justin to death. Autopsy results indicate the baby had bruises on his body. Justin lived at this Raynham home with his mother, Melanie Prado, and Peters, her live-in boyfriend. The couple had been at a party Sunday night and called 911 in the morning to report the child was not breathing. Peters is now pleading not guilty. Never um, harmed the child in any way. Uh, was caring for the child, was at home with the child when this happened. Apparently, mother was also at home, sister was apparently at home. Justin's mother, Melanie, has not been charged in his murder, although the district attorney's office says this investigation is still ongoing. By the way, Melanie Prado was not in court today. Friends of the couple have maintained Justin was not abused. Christine Silva babysat for Justin the night he died. She says no one thought twice about prior bruises on the child's body. The baby is very active. He was at my house last week and he takes these fits. And when he takes these fits, the other day he was slamming his head on the cabinet. I mean, it's just little things he, he hurt himself. Now, Peter's attorney says there were several people who came in contact with Justin the night of his death, and that attorney maintains that although Eric Peters apparently bathed and put little Justin to bed that night, he is not responsible for his death. Now, if convicted, Peters could face life in prison without parole. Live in the newsroom, Katerina Bandini, 7 News. A Boston teenager charged with killing a high school honor student is locked up tonight. Anthony Robinson pleaded not guilty today. 17-year-old is accused of gunning down Barrington Nevins last month. Prosecutors say Robinson shot Nevins for his leather jacket. They say Robinson has confessed to the murder. Another teenage suspect has also been arrested. Lamar Alexander says he's up to the first major challenge on the road to the White House. The Republican candidate for president today added his name to the New Hampshire primary ballot. Alexander says it's going to be a three-man race in New Hampshire. He says looks for the names Lamar Alexander, Bob Dole, and Phil Graham. And the Senate gives Pre President Clinton its approval for the Bosnia peace plan. The Senate voted not to stop the deployment of U.S. troops by withholding funds. As many senators say they went along with the vote despite their disapproval of U.S. involvement in Bosnia. President Clinton is on his way to Paris tonight to sign the Bosnian peace plan. Keep it right here on 7 News for the very latest on the mission. We'll bring you developments as they happen. Some analysts say it's a marriage made in banking heaven. Boston, uh, Bank of Boston and Bay Banks announced yesterday that they plan to merge. Bay Banks of Boston will be the second biggest bank in New England and the 15th biggest across the nation. 7 News reporter Darlene McCarthy has that story. When these two rivals got married, the dowry was a rich one. Two billion dollars Bank of Boston paid for Bay Banks. That is twice Bay Banks' worth. But now this new merged financial institution is one of the top 15 banks in the country. Yeah, we're a big bank, but our customers are really, really important. I'm kind of uh, into Bay Banks now because they're everywhere. The merger means lots of convenience for consumers, 400 different bank branches, and 1,700 ATM locations. But $2 billion is a big price to pay for a bank. They'll have to pay for it somehow. Some fear that fees will now go up. Banks get a lot of the money out of us as it is. They're making interest off of us. So I really don't see why laying off 2,000 people, they have to, you know, increase fees. That's right, even though this combined bank will now be worth $55 billion, 2,000 people are being let go. Meanwhile, the Attorney General's office is going to investigate this merger to make sure that it's not big, that it doesn't have a lock on this region's banking community. Darlene McCarthy, 7 News. Coming up in HealthCast, a first-of-its-kind emergency treatment for stroke patients. Also coming up, preparing for the big one. Scientists say a major earthquake is headed our way. And the Capitol goes up in lights. And guess who gets to flick the switch? Come to Woodworkers Warehouse, where you'll find more discounted power and hand tools under one roof than you've ever seen before. Like this Reliant 14-inch one-horsepower bandsaw with enclosed base. Cuts wood, plastics, metal, and more. Regular $279.95, now only $249.95.
or this Reliant One Horsepower Dust Collector. Keeps machinery and workshops clean from dangerous sawdust and wood chips. Just $179.95. With over 90 locations throughout the Northeast, at Woodworkers Warehouse, you'll always find the right tool at the right price. Andrew Lloyd Webber's theatrical masterpiece. The London and Broadway phenomenon. The Phantom of the Opera. Surrender to the grand passion, to the spectacle, to the power of the music of the night. Coming for a very special engagement. One more word. Returns to the Wang Center July 19th for a limited engagement. Tickets now at the box office or call 617-931-2222. For those who've been especially good this year, your GMC dealer has a new Jimmy with over 70 cubic feet of cargo space and, of course, a low step-in height. Plus, a special offer, gift wrap just for you. Hope you've been good for goodness sake. Happy holidays from your GMC dealers. body can express everything and is beholding to nothing except truth. We're all aiming in the direction of a visionary named Alvin Ailey. If you come to see us, you better bring a seatbelt with you. Our audiences rely on the American Express card all across the world. The experts warn it will happen. Someday a major earthquake is going to strike New England. Now the danger is so real, seismologists and the state say we must be ready. It's tonight's 7 News reports. With little warning, earthquakes have hit California and Japan, leaving death and destruction. It can also happen here in New England. Sooner or later, we definitely will see a big one. Uh, an earthquake big enough to cause damage, an earthquake potentially to cause injury and, and loss of life. Seismologists at Weston Observatory detect earthquakes rumbling through Massachusetts every year. In a fortified bunker, emergency management officials are preparing for a major earthquake. We have equipment that we control sirens for the emergency planning areas. Uh, Your motto? Uh, when, not if. We know that it's going to happen. It's a question of when. Under Boston and the rest of New England, pressure is building in the Earth's crust, as it did when a major earthquake hit in 1755. It wouldn't surprise me if we had an earthquake like that tomorrow. It wouldn't surprise me if we had to wait another hundred years or more for an earthquake like that. We just don't know. A tremor would do the most damage to older buildings, like those in the Back Bay. The building construction here, on the average, is not as good uh, as it is in Los Angeles, where for uh, some decades now, uh, new construction particularly has been made earthquake res resistant. One study predicts an earthquake near Boston would cause hundreds of deaths, thousands of injuries, and up to six billion dollars in damage. Are we ready? Well, this is the uh, state's emergency operating center. It is four stories beneath the earth, a relic of the Cold War. With a bank of phones and radios, the staff would direct the state's police, fire, and ambulance crews. It could be a major fire, could be a tornado, could be an earthquake, hurricane, blizzard. We have a state team ready to do what has to be done. The bunker is equipped with its own electric generators, a kitchen, a dormitory, and even a morgue. On the street, people might think you're nuts. You've got a bunker, you're prepared for an earthquake. This is New England. Well, that's true. A lot of people uh, aren't really aware that they're living in a seismic zone. He's not alone in getting ready. The American Red Cross is also taking the threat very seriously. It has an earthquake plan and is ready to provide shelter, food, and medical attention. It is already coordinating with the state of Massachusetts and with other agencies. And something we can learn from folks in California who deal with this mm -hmm. all the time, when that earthquake does strike, be it now or decades from now, the thing people want to remember is more people get hurt by things falling. Seek shelter under something secure, a strong desk uh, in basements sometimes. Mm -hmm. You don't want to be standing next to anything that can topple. Get away from the, uh, the China cabinet, that's for that's certain. That's a huh? good place to get away yeah. from. There's still much more ahead on 7 News. As the temperature drops, we have some tips on avoiding frostbite. That's in HealthCast.
And snow is in our future. Here's the first package of moisture headed our way for tomorrow. The next 48 to 72 hours look to be very eventful around here. I'll let you know about it. You know those designer fragrances you find at department stores? Excuse me, could you pass me the cotton balls? They're the same ones you'll find at Walgreens. Why pay more when you can save at least 50% off these designer fragrance gift sets? Now at Walgreens. Poor girls in Gloucester always see kids, no, young kids, buying cigarettes from machines. So what do they do? They start a petition. They collect signatures, lots of signatures. They take them to the city council. Revisions, lawyers, politicians, boom. The mayor grabs his pen, signs it into law. Wheels turn, the action begins. Say bye-bye. Four kids, they had an idea. They took control, they changed the rules, so can you. Carpet shoppers, at this time of year, you need more than a sale, more than a great deal. Till Saturday at New York Carpet World, you get it. Bargains, bargains, bargains. Look at these plushes, $4.44. All these textures, these Berbers, amazing, $4.44. We're liquidating thousands of rolls, unbelievable, $4.44. Hurry, incredible bargains, store-wide with credit-free and no payments till summer. Don't miss the bargains. Carpet, $4.44. Yes, $4.44 at New York Carpet World till Saturday. The holiday tree at the nation's capital is uh, uh, bright tonight. House Speaker Newt Gingrich did the honors by switching on the lights. Suddenly, the Capitol Christmas tree was aglow. Afterward, a chorus sang. The towering tree drew gra gasps from children and grown-ups who came to see the ceremony. Time for New England's current weather conditions and forecast with Harvey Leonard. This is 7 Weather. Several persistent days of cold usually leads to something, and I think it's going to lead to something this time. 26 in Boston. Uh, the air is still quite dry. The wind chill is not too big of a problem now because the wind has died down, and the barometer is very strong for now with high pressure to the north. And you know what this is? These are a few snow flurries being picked up by the very sensitive uh, radar out of the National Weather Service office in Taunton. And with the wind out of the north, a few flurries could clip the outer cape, many of these not reaching the ground. And later tonight, as the winds become light east, a few could wander near the shoreline. Just a possibility. But because the winds will be so, so light, I don't expect much of a situation there. So let's get into the bigger things that are going to be taking place. First of all, in terms of temperature, the cold air is clearly locked in place, as you can see. Already teens and single digits showing to the north and west. Another cold night, as it will be clear for a while. But look at the warm air off to the south. We have a boundary that's developed there, and this storm system is going to try and buck into the cold air that's established over our area, and that will bring the snow in tomorrow. Now, notice the clouds are just about up to New York City, and they'll be moving in after midnight tonight. And as for the snow itself, which is moving into western New York and western PA, most of that should move in after the morning commute. So I think we'll squeeze by that. Snow breaking out late morning, certainly by noontime, and then a snowy afternoon and first part of tomorrow night as this wave of low pressure approaches. I think one to three inches will be on the ground for the evening commute with a steady snow falling. And then later tomorrow night, it'll probably end as a band of ice across the region and then end as just rain down on Cape Cod. So from this event, meaning late tomorrow morning into tomorrow night, I expect one to three inches south coast in the Cape ending as rain, two to five inches for the bulk of our area, ending as either rain or freezing drizzle borderline, and then three to six inches from the interior Merrimack Valley northward through central and northern New England. That's not the end of the story, though, because that first wave of low pressure just south of us will exit early Friday. We'll be left with a northerly wind at ground level, which will keep it fairly cold, although above it will have warmed. So there might be some freezing drizzle, then storm two approaches with probably an icy mix beginning Friday afternoon and Friday night. And as that storm then intensifies around Cape Cod, it may pull cold air in at the end and change it to snow. So there's a lot to follow. The forecast goes like this. For tonight, very cold, clear for a while, cloudy very late, a light north wind. Tomorrow, the snow begins mid to late morning. Steady snow tomorrow afternoon, accumulating one to three inches by the evening rush hour, if we can see that. 18 well inland, low 30s on the Cape at the end of the day. Snow for the first part of tomorrow night, ending as ice most areas except rain south shore on the Cape. And then Friday, a little freezing drizzle early. Then we get another storm of an icy mix Friday afternoon into Friday night, which may end as snow 
on Saturday. Much more for you, of course, at 11. In HealthCast, advice on how to keep Jack Frost from biting too hard this winter. But first, improving the outcome of people who suffer a stroke. Here's Lester Strong. A new stroke medication gives patients a fighting chance against permanent disabilities. The drug called TPA can dissolve clots in the brain that cause strokes. A study in this week's New England Journal of Medicine reports that 30% of stroke patients given TPA within three hours of symptoms were likely to have little or no disabilities after three months compared to patients not given the drug. But timing is everything. People should do everything they can to get to the hospital as soon as possible to have a neurological evaluation and also to have a CAT scan because that is uh, necessary prior to considering these therapies. Stroke symptoms include partial paralysis of the arms and legs, slurred speech or numbness in parts of the body. Spend enough time outdoors in these freezing temperatures and you may find that little nip turning to a big bite, frostbite. It begins with a loss of sensation of the skin, then redness and swelling. Unchecked, it can lead to loss of fingers and toes. Protecting your hands and feet from the cold is the best way to prevent the big chill. Medical experts also recommend warming your hands and feet in water just above body temperature at about 100 degrees. If you lose sensation in your hands or feet or if blisters form, see your doctor. That's HealthCast. I'm Lester Strong. Some great news about Christopher Reeve, who is going home for the holidays. He left a rehabilitation facility in time to spend Christmas at home with his wife and children. It has been seven months since a riding accident left him paralyzed. His publicist quote doctors saying the Superman star is now able to breathe for 15 minutes at a time without the help of a respirator. Believe it or not, something is on the line for both the Patriots and the Steelers on Saturday. More on that story straight ahead in sports. There's a lot of little things to like about Ford Contour, like its innovative air filtration system that removes dust and pollen for cleaner air for your family. And you'll really like Contour's little price. Well equipped is just $15,165. You'll find there's a lot to like about the 96 Ford Contour. See your New England Ford dealer today. How does Minota stay on top? Do you think that I'd zoom to Bora Bora without my new explorer? I can keep my little girl at any age with Minolta's Freedom Family Zoom. I know about being number one, and the maximum 300 SI keeps Minolta on top. This Minolta Compact can't zoom to 140 millimeters? I lied. Only from the mind of Minolta. By any Minolta camcorder, and you've joined Club Minolta. Wow. I'm intrigued. Very natural. I feel like I'm on my honeymoon again. This could change my life, this machine, you know. Most people know instantly the Health Rider is the right fitness machine for them, even before they know they can own one for just $49 a month. To get your Health Rider for $49 a month, or to find out where you can test ride it at a mall near you, call 1-800-UP-AND-DOWN right away. Because the special Health Rider holiday offer ends December 31st. Set in the heart of the city, the Bostonian Hotel is the perfect place to experience all that Boston offers. You'll enjoy superb accommodations, elegant dining in our award-winning Seasons Restaurant, and a level of service that sets the Bostonian apart. All in a charming, intimate setting that is Boston at its most inviting. And at a special weekend rate starting at $139 that makes it all the more inviting. For reservations, call 1-800-343-0922. Isn't it nice to know you can always count on the L.L. Bean catalog to have the perfect Christmas gift for everyone on your list? While visions of sugar plums dance. Best of all, it's probably in your house right now. The L.L. Bean Christmas catalog. There. Wasn't that easy? And now, complete New England sports coverage with Gene Laventi. This is Seven Sports. Whatever you do, do not call Saturday's game in Pittsburgh with the Patriots and Steelers meaningless. The Steelers are looking for the home field advantage for the playoffs, while the Patriots, well, they're looking for a little respect. John Dennis looks forward to the weekend. 
If Curtis Martin is again thanking his victorious teammates after Saturday's game against the tough Steelers in Pittsburgh, it would be a big boost to this football team. I think it's a great opportunity for this football team um, to really salvage something from, from, uh, from this season. You know, if we can go in and, and, and beat this team right now, they're, they're extremely hot. They're a very good football team. They won seven in a row, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, if we can go in and beat them, that'll, that'll be making a pretty good statement for us. It's the same as any other team. When you go in there and they're playing good on defense, you just have to block them. If you block them, you're going to run it. If you can't block them, you're not going to run it. Adding even a little more interest to the running game scenario is the fact that rookie Curtis Martin is going home to Pittsburgh to play in front of friends and family and a whole lot of people who need tickets. Actually, we don't even have enough. I'm still trying to get some more, but uh, I, I don't even think I can get enough. What do you need? 110, <laughs> <laughs> but I only have 70. Go ask the coach. He probably doesn't have many friends in Pittsburgh. John Dennis, Seven Sports. Yeah, isn't that the truth? It's the Sixers and Celtics at the Fleet Center tonight. A win puts the green at the 500 mark. And get this, it would be the Celtics' 10th win of the season, which would give them as many wins as the Bruins. Dana Barros looks to continue his string of games, consecutive That'll games, with three-pointers. Three Last night was a 75th straight game with a tray four short of the NBA record, held by former ex-Eagle Michael Adams. Last night's game was AC Earl time as Eric Montross greeted his former teammate. Common occurrence, the dunk over AC this year. Sees building a lead, and with the help of Dina Raja, held off the Raptors before pulling away down the stretch for the 116-96 win. Medfield's Peter Hurricane McNeely getting it done again. Last night, he put some anesthetic to the fighting surgeon, Dr. Harold Whiteman, in the first round of a heavyweight battle in Punta Gorda, Florida. McNeely knocked the good doctor to the canvas twice in the first round. The first knockdown didn't exactly delight the 15 or 100, uh, 1,500 or so on hand. The 232 of the first round, McNeely turned out the lights on the 43-year-old fighting surgeon whose nickname is Hacky. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to have any type of surgery from a doctor whose nickname is Hacky. McNeely improves to 38-2 with 32 knockouts. Up next for Hurricane Pete, Eric Butterbean Esch. He's the guy who looks like Curly of Three Stooges fame. Celtic Sixers, Bruins, Rangers highlights coming away at 11. We'll see you then. That's going to wrap up 7 News at 6. I'm Kim Kerrigan. I'm John Marler. Tonight on 7 News at 11, we'll have the latest on the child rescued from an icy pond on Cape Cod. Doctors right now are trying to save his life. And Harvey will have an update on that snowstorm headed our direction tomorrow. We'll see you tonight at 11.